Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry unit. This is video number 13 and we're going to be looking at molarity. So up till now we've been doing some calculations, some stoichiometry involving masses, uh, solids and also gases. But we also quite often in chemistry use solutions. And when we use solutions, then we're talking about a different quantity um, that we need to start to take account of and also to start to calculate, and that quantity is concentration. Now, the concentration of a, of a solute in a solution is referred to as its molarity. And I'm sure you've seen bottles uh, in the science laboratory that have been labeled something like 1m or 0.1m. And this is an indication of their molarity, where the capital M is actually standing for moles per litre. We hopefully remember from our previous studies that uh, solutions are a combination of a solute in a solvent. Most of the time that solvent will be water, but not always. And now we know that if we can weigh out a certain amount of solvent of solute, then we can work out the number of moles of that solute. If we then divide that by the uh, volume of the solution, then we can calculate molarity. So if you want to define molarity, I guess we just define it as the number of moles of solute per litre of solution, and that's hence why the units are moles per litre. Put another way, I guess, a one molar solution will contain the equivalent of one mole of solute for every one litre of solution. Now, often we uh, use solutions in much smaller quantities than the litre, often even in dropper bottles. Each of these will still indicate their molarity, and they're going to be used for a number of different chemical reactions uh, as we proceed through our study of chemistry. Mathematically, and because this unit is very much about quantitative chemistry, it's about the mathematics of uh, that's associated with the calculations of things like concentration. This is the equation right here. Concentration C is equivalent to the number of moles divided by volume. Now, of course, um, this means we can set it up in a nice little triangle, such as the one that's uh, indicated here on the slide, where number of moles goes up in the top and concentration and volume uh, sit down below. So we can find concentration by dividing the number of moles by the volume. We can also find the number of moles by multiplying the concentration and the volume. One little way to try and help you remember this uh, alternate version is that the most important thing that you would put on your CV is your name, name on your CV. This is a, um, interesting way, a different way of trying to remember this particular formula, most of which you'll be given anyway. So there will be a formula sheet and you'll have some of these on there. But I suggest that by the time you have um, carried out a number of different calculations involving not only this formula, but several of the others that we've looked at already, you will become more and more familiar with each of these different types of formulae. And hence, they will start to become more um, top of your mind when you're working through these questions. In later videos, we will be looking at some different types of calculations where the use of this formula is going to be critical. But for now, we just wanted to set up molarity to give you a bit of an idea about the fact that we do look at concentrations of solutions in the laboratory and that our primary measurement tool for these concentrations is molarity, that is moles per litre. It's not the only unit that we use for concentration, but we'll have a look at those in a little bit more detail in the next video. Thanks for watching.